I'm Vicky and I'm here today at Chelsea School. Have you ever noticed that on the surface of a plum there's a sort of light dustiness? Well, that's something called yeast. Yeast lives in nature. It's a tiny living thing. And whenever yeast lands on something nice and sugary, it's quite happy and it just grows there. The milkiness is due to the growth of microorganisms. I now need to roll that plum very carefully onto some special jelly. A jelly that contains nutrients that will grow the microorganisms. And so what we need to do is to encourage the cells to grow. This is called an incubator and it's just a heater. It will keep the microorganisms nice and warm. My plate has been in the incubator now, this oven, for just over a day. And I can see that there are things growing on it. I can see clearly that there are lots and lots of cells. These yeast cells that are growing all over the surface of this jelly have come from the plums. But to really check, I need to make a slide and to look at those cells underneath the microscope. I've got my microscope slide here and now I'm just going to stroke the surface, a very gentle stroke. I'm now going to place them onto the microscope slide and I'm going to add one or two drops of this bright red stain. I take my slide over to the microscope stage, the lens just into the oil. Now I need to look down the microscope. There they are, the most beautiful yeast cells I've seen for a long time. Have you ever heard of yeast before? Yeah. You have heard of yeast before? What's yeah. yeast? What do you know about yeast? Um, well, it's used to make bread rice. It's used to make bread rice, that's interesting. That's all I know. That's all you know about yeast, yeah? And the reason that we put it in bread, because as yeast grows, it produces a gas, and the gas gets collected inside the bread, and that's what makes it nice and fluffy. Now, today, we're going to do a little experiment, okay? We're going to do a little experiment to see if we can capture the gas that yeast makes. Now, what is it that things need to live and to grow. What do you think the yeast might need to live and grow? Can you? Oxygen. Oxygen? Yeah, so <laughs> air, right? It needs food. We're going to give our yeast some food today. The, the food that we're going to give it is sugar, and it's just a normal type of sugar that you'd put in your tea. What else does yeast need to grow? Water. Water. We're going to give it warm water. I'm going to do mine first, but what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put any yeast in mine. We'll use that as a little controller, a little tester for our experiment. I want to prove to you that I'm not cheating. Okay, so just take your time and add it in very carefully. Try and put three teaspoons of yeast in. That's it, lean over the bowl. That's all right, don't worry if you make a mess. There we go. Sugar. Ordinary, normal sugar. Normal sugar like you'd put in your tea. Yep. Already? So if you want to put some water, so grab a bottle and put just just about over about halfway. That's it. Brilliant. Right, screw the lids back onto the tubes, onto the bottles. Give them a really good shake. Really, really good shape. I like that, taking turns. That's brilliant. Right, so I've got my bottle here, and I'm gonna take a balloon. If I can get one of you in your pair to stretch the balloon over the top, and the other one hold the bottle really, really tightly. That's it. To see if we can capture the gas that yeast makes. So what happens when yeast grows, I've got a little toy here to show you. So when it grows, the, the next yeast, the yeast 
sort of child, if you like, grows off of the top of it and it slowly buds. And as it grows, it'll eventually look a bit like that. And then after a while, it sort of just goes pop and falls off and you're left behind with these little scars. That's called yeast budding. So they do that as they grow. And that's what's going to be happening in your tubes. The yeast will grow, produce lots more yeast, and as they grow, they'll just continue to produce gas as well. But we'll leave them, we'll leave them and measure them every 10 minutes. We'll see what happens at the end and see if we can think about any differences, especially with my one without the yeast in it. The way that we're going to measure our balloon is we're going to take this measuring tape, so we're going to round the outside and measure how many centimetres it is. Now mine is about 13 and a half centimetres around the outside, but I would guess that the gas that I've got in here is the gas that I trapped whenever I put the balloon on the top, because it hasn't really inflated at all, has it? So if you do your measurement in centimetres and do it around the fattest part of the balloon, Maybe Harry, you could help hold with one hand and help hold the measuring tape with the other. Roughly about 21. 21 centimetres after 10 minutes, all right. So we've got 19.4 and about 21. So how about we measure again in about another 10 minutes, all right? Who's going to do their measurement first this time? Anya, do you guys want to do yours first this time? Try again, just double check. We've got, we're being good scientists here. We're going to try and be nice and accurate. 26 and a half. Green dot there. Yeah. That's brilliant. Right guys, let's do our last measurement now. Now, you've had enough practice now. One person hold on to the balloon, other person measure it around the fattest part of the balloon. It's been 30 minutes and I think our balloons are getting nice and big. Harry, you hold on to the bottle nice and tight this time. That's brilliant. That's great. And how many centimetres have we got round the outside? 30 yeah. centimetres. 30. That's about 28. About 28 centimetres. That's good. That's great. Okay. Great. How many centimetres was it? Um, 20 and a half. 28 and a half. So again, just a little bit below the green dot that Harry's just put on, I think. If we have a little look at our results here, can you remember what's actually happening in the balloons? The yeast is growing. So what is yeast? It's a really tiny little thing that you can't see. You can probably get about 20 individual yeast cells across a human hair. You can barely see a human hair. They're really thin, aren't they? So they're, they're, that's how tiny they are. Why is it that even though you put in three teaspoons of yeast and three teaspoons of sugar, and so did you, why is it that they're different? They put in larger teaspoons of sugar so the yeast had more food. We might have not put the balloon at the same time. Yeah, you could put the balloon at the same time. <coughs> Maybe the water was cooler than the other one. What about the opposite of what Alex said? Alex said that it could be extra sugar in there, but there could just as well have been a lot more yeast. Oh, a couple of million more in ours. Yeah, they could have been. What did I do differently? Um, didn't put any yeast in. I didn't put any yeast in. And if we have a little look at my balloon, we didn't really measure it, did we? There wasn't really any point. Because I didn't put any yeast in, there's just sugary water in here. And my balloon didn't really blow up at all. Why is that? Maybe because the, the yeast produces carbon dioxide, which is what inflated the balloon. The balloon. And there's no yeast in there. So what it is, is we're showing that it was the power of yeast that helped us blow up that balloon. Isn't that good? Yep, yep, yep.